everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Joy Evans. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. Today we're taking a look at Anunnaki Dawn of the Gods. This is a new game from Cranio. And what's interesting about this game is one of the designers is Simone Luciani, who's best known for making hefty Euro style games. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, which this does not look like at all. This looks like a dudes on a map game. And well, look like it. It's it is that it, to it some is. degree. It's a smaller version of that. It is. It's half Euro. It's it's a hybrid. It's a hybrid, and it's about aliens coming to Earth, and then we say, oh, those are not aliens; those are gods, and they gods. just happen to be the Egyptian gods from one planet, and so on. So no, they were aliens the whole time. Spoiler, Chris. You don't need some to people still haven't seen Stargate. What? Double spoiler. All right. So anyhow, <laughs> um, let me show you how it plays a little bit, and we'll be right back. In this game, each player is going to play a race. So we're going to pick Stargate here and play the Egyptians. When you play a race, you're going to have your major god. In this case, it's Ra. And you'll also draw five minor gods and pick four of them to keep, putting them up there. You have your player board here. You have your own home world. And you'll start with one of your buildings on it, one of your settlements, and some of your troops on it. You start with one of the four different resources in the game. So everyone's going to have this. There's also going to be Earth placed out in the middle of the board, and we're going to begin. Now, everything is taking place around this action board here, so I want to show you a little bit more about how this action board works. One player is going to put all these actions randomly up on this board, and then everyone else will copy it, so everyone's playing with the same action tree. On your first turn, pick any action you want. In fact, every turn, you can pick any action you want. You just move your marker to it, and that's the action you take. However, if you move along a line, like if I take from this action, go here, then I'll place a cube here. And in fact, since there is a gem there, I'm going to get one of these gems, and I'll be able to use that in the future. So moving around and doing these lines, there's two reasons you might do them. I might go from here to here, because that would give me two of the gems. But another reason is when you completely have surrounded a triangle, at the end of your turn, you're going to be able to remove that triangle. You're going to pick one of your minor gods, put that triangle there, and now they are going to come out on the board. You also have their power. Sometimes it's a one-time power. Sometimes it's a permanent power. And they're also going to allow you to move up on a track. When you have all five of the ones surrounding this middle spot, that's when your major god comes out. Your major god's going to let you move on a lot of tracks, but also, you have a power here at the beginning of the game. You'll get a second power once your major god comes out. So let's talk about some of these actions. There are both move actions and there is a teleport action. A teleport lets you just take someone and move them to any other spot. Now, you're probably not going to want to stay on your own planet. You might want to go to somebody else's planet, or you might want to go to Earth. The only place you can't teleport is to Atlantis, those spots in the middle. Otherwise, you can move. If you have two movement, I might go one, two, or I might go one, two, like that. If you move to a spot with enemies, you're going to have a fight. You can also get resources. When you get resources on the spot, you're going to get these resources. This spot here, your home spot, is great because you always be able to get, for example, in this case, I'm always able to get one food. If I go up here, I have a possibility of getting three food, but I would need a harvesting strength of three, which means I need to have three of my little dudes there, or maybe one little dude and a minor god who has a strength of two. Let's say both of these are here. I'm going to harvest three food. However, every time you harvest, you deplete one of them. doesn't matter how much you harvest it. If you harvest it one or three, you're going to deplete one, except you'll never deplete this one here. So you're going to have to go out and find more ways to get food. So you have movement, you have harvesting, you can run this line up here. So this will give me another population. And the more settlements that I build, let's say I run it here, I would get two more units on the board and two victory points. So the more that you have uncovered, the more things you're going to get. I can take contracts, I can get resources, um, I can move along the domination track. So these are the kind of the basic actions. You also have an extra action you can do here if you have enough gems to spend. I can spend three to do one of my red actions again, two to do one of my blue actions, any one I want. You can also buy more things. You pay 
Two wood and a gem to put out another settlement somewhere. Two food and a gem to put out three more units. Two gold and a gem to take one of these and flip it over and make that action better. So for example, this one here lets me move two. I turn it over, now it lets me move four. The red ones cost an extra wood and iron, but they can, you know, they get much better. This one is a movement of three, now it's a movement of five. This lets me mine two areas, now I can harvest three areas. And then I can also buy more weapons. So weapons, um, you're, everyone's gonna start the game with two blue weapons. And these weapons are gonna be different for each group. You can buy more weapons, you just go through your whole deck of weapons and pick any weapon that you want when you're playing this game. Now, whenever you get into a fight, if you attack somebody, you must have one red weapon. And on the board and in different spots are going to be these. These are ancient civilizations you can try to take out. You just know they're between three and five, although there's going to be two of them starting in Atlantis, and they're going to be six to eight strength. Each of your units is one. Your big god's three. Your minor gods are two. You play a card. Uh, if you're the attacker, it must be a red card. And if these cards have any resource on the side, you have to play those to use them. This strength will be added to your side. The winner, once you add everything together and attackers win ties, will get the victory points in the bottom and move up the military track. And then this one, I cancel my opponent's card. So sometimes, like this dagger only adds one, but if I win with it, I'll get five victory points. The blue cards are there. These never leave your hand. When you use a red card, it gets spent and put away, but you'll be able to buy it again if you want. These you always get back in your hand. Here we have the board that's going to keep tracks, and you have four different tracks that you'll be moving along on this board. Now, whenever you flip one of your tiles, you'll be moving up one or two spots on this track here. Whenever you fight someone, you're going to move up on this spot based on the weapon card that you use. And this spot will be here whenever you take deals or these are cards that when you go pay these resources, you're going to get a bunch of bonuses on the bottom and you get to move on this track here. Although you can only take these cards if you're on the planet that matches that. So you have to move to their planet to be able to take the cards to do that. And this track here, a much longer track, you move by taking the domination action, which is going to let you move one on this track plus one for whatever token is here. These four tokens are randomly put here at the beginning of the game. This one is for how many settlements you have. So let's say I have three settlements. Whenever I move in a domination track, I'm going to move one plus one for each settlement. This one, these three, you move on them based on you doing those actions. But at the end of the game, they're going to get you points. Whoever's the farthest on each track gets four points, then two points for second. But also, you'll take the multiplier you've reached and multiply it by this. This is for every three units you have on a board. This is for five, for however many shrines you have on a board. And this is for every two territories that you control. At the end of the game, and the game is triggered when one person crosses this line with one of their markers, although you have to be on the domination one for that to work, or if someone has placed out all their cubes on their board. So when that happens, you're gonna, you'll have gotten some points during the game. You'll score some points based on here. You'll lose points or get positive points. These will all be multiplied by these effects here. You've gotten points from finishing things like that. And there's a few other bonus points that you will have gotten. And whoever has the most points is the winner. Okay, folks, this is from Cranio, and it seems that a lot of games in Cranio have some production problems. One thing I, I really want to mention, first of all, is this is the game. It's a big box. It is. I think we can agree on that. Yeah. This is not the Kickstarter edition. The Kickstarter edition comes in a box that is... Twice this size. Literally really? twice, twice the size. Thick. This is not the yeah. Kickstarter edition. It is not, but huh. it is almost everything from the Kickstarter is in this box. But This there. box is too big for what comes in it. The Kickstarter box is too big for what comes in it. And that's not even... I'm not exaggerating there, right? It just, there's an overwhelming waste of plastic stuff inside the box. And it's not even good plastic inserts because you need to put the right piece in the right spot. I'm like, well, this tray is for one of the factions. Which one? you got to figure it out because they don't fit in the other ones. So that, I think, is a problem. I wish they hadn't done that. But there's other weird problems with the game. Like, <clears throat> a lot of this is good. I like the miniatures. I think the miniatures, they're hard plastic. That doesn't bother me. Right. I like the miniatures. I don't like the board that you put the... I mean, I like and dislike the board that you take actions on. 
because it's recessed for the gods. Sometimes. And, and, and recessed for the other things, but it's not recessed for the tiles. It's yeah. recessed for the cubes. Yep. Yep. It, it's it's recessed on the 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 um, track for the different resources you have, except for the zero space. What? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta commit. We do occasionally go to zero, right? <laughs> yeah. You gotta commit. <laughs> in fact, the resources are really tight. You're very often at zero. Yes, I yeah. know. In fact, every time I teach it to people, they're like, "Well, how do I get any resources?" I'm like, "You start with one of each kind." Oh, I do. Yeah, that's not the, the, the first spot is one. Um, have you ever made it to the top of a resource track? No, I think, no. I think it is hilarious that the resources have ten on the back. What are you doing? <laughs> Spend those resources. Right. You could be hoarding them because some factions have a one point for every uh, red resource you have left over at the end of the game. One of those minor gods. Sure. Yeah. Maybe. And points are tight enough that if you had like twelve... Like, you've accomplished something. So that's the only way that I could see. So, you know what? Good. Good that they did that. But, like you said, overall good production with just some major question marks. Not huge detractors, but question marks. But I want to show you all my favorite. I didn't show this in the overview, but this is my favorite. Where is it in here? I had to search for it because... I don't even know if it's in here. Did we take stuff out? You know I just organized that, Tom, right? I'm it moving bags. Again. I'm beautiful. moving bags around. Okay, well, I can't mm -hmm. find it in here because it's that small. But there are, oh no, here they are. In our miscellaneous pieces bag. This is a player aid that comes with the game. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness, yes. This Which is the player aid. What a fit printed on the board. Oh my word. First of all, not useful. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> just put this on the board. This, this really cracked me up that this exists. And there's a lot of little pieces like that. Ah. I did remember, I, the one thing I did want to talk about that I didn't mention in the overview. There is some neat stuff, though. If you conquer the Atlantis in the middle, you get to draw from these big oversized cards right. that will give you some weird artifact and cool ability. Yeah. And I think the theme in this game, it's interesting. I, I like it. I like the, the one faction, the Norse gods. Your, your special ability is you can move your, your settlements. settlements around. ships. Mm -hmm. Like, because they're, they're basically large boats. And they can carry people with them. So you can move more units for Yeah, less. it's really cool. And I like the, the look of everything. The Egyptian has pyramids, like you saw in the example, and temples. And when it's set up, it looks big. And in fact, I think it's almost a false impression. If someone walks by a the table, they're like, Oof, I don't like this kind of game. I'm like, maybe you do. Because you don't like the kind of game this looks like, I would bet. Big dudes on because, a map. Because yeah, 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 it looks like a dudes on a map game. It, it looks really like, does. Yeah. Looks like Rising Sun. Not as big, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Pr pretty big. Well, let's talk about the action selection star, I like the pentagram. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's that's, one of my favorite really in a cool. game ever. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, there's just so many good choices because you're trying to decide between. Do you want to be as efficient getting all those bonuses? Do you want to put out the little guys? Do you want to put out that big god? Do you want to race for that? Or do you want to get all your actions in the right order but hop around and then not get all the crystals and not get the, the cubes out and not get the gods out? And the then the balance no. about getting that middle god, the big god, it's like when you go around, you're not getting those benefits because those are blank, and mm -hmm. then you want to go to the outside to get those crystals. It's like, man, will yeah. my god be out long enough to make that difference? Yeah, yeah, I love I love the give and take of the trying to balance that out. There's so much opportunity cost yeah. going on. Yeah. But but they did a good job of balancing as well that in the late game you're like, I really don't care about getting my big god piece, the main god one out there, and the power is fine, but it's like really late in the game. But also that's like five track movement steps, so you're still considering it even late game. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. But you're also never stuck. You can always take whatever action you want right. right now. And you can even pay crystals to take an extra action, which mm -hmm. sometimes makes sense. And I like the crystal actions because crystals are pretty easy to get, just not always efficient to get them. Mm -hmm. You can always just go to a spot and then travel on that line. You'll never get all the crystals on your board. But you can always do that, and those extra actions, it's just a, it feels good. And also, actions are fairly quick, too. Whatever you're doing, I can go. The only thing that slows the game down slightly is battles. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Yeah. And, and also, because this game has an odd pacing to it, where there's five phases to the turn, that's what that little piece of cardboard player aid yes. reminds yeah. you of. And it is important to do those in order. And so that's, that's where that player aid is good. 
Um, but because on a turn you might do phases one, not two, but three, and then not any of the last ones, the game has an odd cadence where a lot of times people are waiting there for the player before them because they're like, oh, I've been done with my turn for like a minute. You're like, oh, that's right. You don't. You didn't have to do steps four and five this turn. I've been getting used to that. So sure, because at the beginning everyone has crystals, so everyone's doing the second step. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, other than that, though, yeah, right. Battles are the only other thing that kind of slows it down. What'd you all think of the fighting? I like it a lot. It's quick. It's it has a little bit of that kind of rock paper scissors mm -hmm. type of of resolution where we each put a card in. And I'm playing this one that cancels your effect, but you thought that I was going to do that, so you played a card that had no effect, but just a lot of, a lot of strength. And that usually bothers me a lot in games. Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, uh, Blood Rage. I don't like that combat resolution a lot. Really? I think in my top three. Really? Yeah, I no. love it. I don't like Blood it. Rage, Cosmic Encounter. You know, this one, uh, Kemet has it. I really like that. This one's closer to Kemet for me in that the cards are far simpler. I enjoy it in this one because I think Ankh had just very confusing. Yeah, way too much. And, it was, and Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea in particular have the most possible effects that go on. This one's very simple. But why Strength would you like this? I mean, I don't know that it's that simple because everyone has different decks. There's not only all one card different. Same. There's only one card There's only different? one card different. Yeah. Okay. Perfection, which helps. So you can look through your cards and see what's possible. The reason why I was okay with this, because I just don't really love battles pretty much in games at all. The reason why I was okay with this was because I could math it out and say, how many dudes do I need to guarantee a success? Right. Against no matter what card someone else plays, like, can I win? And I appreciate that because I really dislike games where it's like, I have a bigger army than you significantly, and yet I still might not win. That frustrates me. And so this one I can say, you know what? I'm going to guarantee that I brought over, you know, seven power and you only have two. Like, there's no way that you can play a bigger card than the cards that I have in hand. And so I, I'm okay with this. There's also not a ton of combat in this game. Even if you go combat That's heavy, and you can, you can say I'm going to do more fights. You might do six, maybe? I mean, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm talking other players. The, the fighting the neutral people, that you can do. Right. But I don't think there's a ton. But even the neutral players, there's only one per player board. So even if you went to all of them, it's max how many players are in the game. And then it'll land in the, one the middle. The central, yeah. yeah. Well, that brings me to something I'm curious what you all think about in this game, and that is the end game condition, which is you have 15 cubes and someone gets past those lines. This game moves pretty quickly and ends pretty quickly. On the box it says 90 minutes, take out setup time. That's 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 very accurate, especially once everyone knows what they're doing. Right. You know, mm -hmm. once you know how to play the game, because whatever you do is going to hasten the end of the game. If you say, I'm going to just do contracts and do the pick up and deliver sort of thing, mm -hmm. that will end the game. If you upgrade all your tiles, that will end the game. If you fight a lot, that will end the game. And if you just move on to one track, you know, uh, if you just move the guy around putting out cubes, the game ends and it can end before you fought ever. It can end right after you get your big god out, or before you get your big god out. It can end pretty quickly. And I don't know, I'm still not sure how I feel about that exactly. I'm, I don't like a game that overstays its welcome. I wondered if this one could have lasted 15 more minutes for me. Here's my big thing. I always say a game, I love a game to end right before you want it to. This ends pretty far before you want it to. It seems like I'm always like, man, I never could get a chance to get... Finally get that big god out and have him start doing stuff, the monster or whatever. So, yeah, I think it ends, and it ends very abruptly, too. Especially if you're not paying attention to that. It's, yeah. just, it's just like, oh, oh, we're going to be done. You know? So, yeah, it ends very quickly. It feels like it needs that one more round, everybody. Right. I'd you know? like to see that in there. Yeah. The I almost up. would make that a house rule that I would play one more round. Yeah. Um, that, but for you, it should definitely you should play with the Uno rule in every game. If someone can end the game next turn, they should tell everybody. I feel like that's, that's just true. that's just common courtesy. That's true. <laughs> that's true. I totally don't do that, Tom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Common courtesy. Interesting. What I don't do you know. think about the end of the game? It's good. I I I would I would rather it lean towards leave you wanting a little bit more, even if it's just a little bit more than you would prefer. 
then outstay its welcome. So it certainly doesn't outstay its welcome. Right. Um, last time we played, actually, just the two of us, it was funny because we made no progress on the tracks whatsoever, like for about half the game, and we're like, "What are we doing wrong?" And we just built up so much that the second half of the game, we shot up those tracks way further, way quicker than expected. Mm -hmm. But I still ended it with cubes. So even with that, oh, I've not seen a game end with cubes yet. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was neat to see that both are viable. So I liked, mm. I like the end game triggers in general. I agree that it feels a little abrupt and soon, but I would rather it lean that way. There are certain actions that will cascade a bit, like in the doing contracts action, you can have one that lets you do another contracts action. So if you have a lot of resources and there's multiples of those out, you could shoot up on that contract track for spaces. I agree. And but it could be a big surprise. The main yeah. thing about the contract thing, a way to, I saw a runaway win with that just recently, you got to go past the baby rules and play that you have to be on the planet to do a contract. That helps mitigate that a bit. You have to be on what planet? A lot of the contracts have a symbol on the top, so oh, when you play at the beginning, one. you can do any, you can oh, do any contract okay, you want. Yeah. But then you have symbol on the top. You have to be on that planet to be able to do that contract. If and they're I, in the game, right? Well, you don't. I don't think you put them in the game if they're not. I think. Oh, okay, that, that's right. That's what. That's it is. fair. And okay. and then so that mitigates the contracts from being too swing. At the beginning, it's easy to do. It's an easy way. Just don't worry about it. But I, I like that. The other question I wanted to know what people thought about was I read a lot about this on the internet. Some people think that it's imbalanced and I'm not I'm not an expert on balancing games mm -hmm. the main god powers do not feel particularly balanced and the minor god powers feel wildly not balanced I don't think it matters tremendously for the minor gods no but I mean some minor gods are like clearly this one is better than this one like not even close <laughs> you know um, but you can draft at the beginning so you know it's not that big of a deal and also sometimes you don't get to use the power just put them out because you wanted a two guy instead of a one. Right. But the big gods, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I feel, I like the game, but I, I feel like they're just not quite balanced. I don't know that I could speak to that. I have played even with the expansion ones, and I've kind of had those questions as well. And I know that I'm not an expert. I speak very seldom to, to balance. Uh, I know that there are times where things feel imbalanced, but they actually are. Uh, and, and the counter-argument to a lot of that would be, this is a dudes on the map game, ha half, maybe a quarter of it, so you can kind of put pressure on players as they're pulling ahead, but this game does make combat harder uh, to get into, which I appreciate, so that people aren't constantly messing with your stuff, but it's not as easy as in other area control and dudes on map games to just pull back the leader. So I don't know. That, does that make sense? No, I agree, right. And it also, this game works very well at two. Yeah. In which case, they better be more balanced then. Yeah. Like, I think the Egyptian one, is it the Egyptian one that lets you move your cubes when you go over them? Oh, okay. I yeah. think that power is way better than the, the, the Roman or Greek one that lets you... If you're on a planet and someone surrounds a token, you get a token. Right. Because that power may or may not ever matter. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't the happen. At all. You can make happen. Yeah. Yes, I agree. So with that. again, these are. I don't even think this is game breaking. In fact, I'll I'll go ahead and jump into my rating. My rating for this is an eight. I like it a lot. I I I, I waffled back and forth on this because I really wanted to give an eight point five, but the small production errors, the fact that the game ends slightly sooner than I wanted to, and a perceived, at least, imbalance. Those things sound like a whole bunch of negatives, actually, but they're minor for me. The action selection board is amazing. I love it. I love the fact, I, I love the way think, har resource to harvest, where it feels like you're running out of resources, but you never quite do because there's ways to get them and other things. The combat system is neat. It looks great, and it plays quickly. That all combines for a very, very good game for me. I'm also giving this one an 8. Because, like you said, there, there are those detractors pulling it back. But, to make sure that I'm speaking to a lot of the positives of this game. Action selection star. Outstanding, right? Um, I like the way that the turn is broken out into phases. Because it gives you lots of opportunity to do clever things within a pretty tight framework. But it lets you still feel clever. Whereas you complete a contract that lets you actually get this extra action. So it feels like you're cascading things 
uh, more than like the restrictive five phases would allow you to. One of the factions allows you to, I think it might be an expansion faction, allows you to take your the first three phases in different order. And you're like, that sounds kind of cool. And then you start doing it. And you're like, this is amazing, actually. So it's cool that within this framework, yes. there's a lot of flexibility. Uh, I really like... I like the fact that you have to get an upgraded weapon in order to initiate combat. It, you, it's kind of like making a declaration of war. You can't just, on turn one, teleport to someone else's planet and start fighting them for no reason. You have to kind of work up to it, and as you see someone working up to it, you're cognizant, that person could fight me at some moment, but are they going to really spend their one upgraded weapon to do that? I think they're going to save it for a better... So, you know what I mean? Like, there's so many smart decisions that make this a very fun game. So, I'm giving it an 8. I enjoy it a lot. Okay. I'm going to give this a 7. This is not my type of game, typically, but I think that because the combat is more... I can see ahead a little bit more, and it's a lot less mind-reading, even though there is an element of that to it. Um... I think because of that, I enjoyed this more than I expected to. I was hoping to. I definitely went into this with that hope of, like, I really like, um, it's Luciani, right? Luciani, Luciani. and Danilo Savio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah who I did um, I don't Rat know Savio. Okay. Um, so I went into this being hopeful, but also not expecting to enjoy it. But I enjoyed it more than I expected. I really like the action selection. To me, that is what makes this game fun. That's what makes it enjoyable. I also enjoy the contracts, the actual, like, moving the dudes around on the board and needing to place them so that I can get resources and the fighting and stuff. Like, all oh, that's fine. Um, but it's definitely, yeah, that action selection, those choices of, do I want to put more guys out now? Or instead, do I want to wait until I have, you know, new settlements out so I can put them in different places? Oh, and if once I get the settlements out, then I can actually put out more guys because once those are out, then I can put out more. And so it's just choosing that order of action. And that, to me, that's what makes this game fun. Um, and that's what I enjoy. Yeah. I'm actually going to add an eight as well, just because mainly what about this is it was not the game I thought I was going to play when you see it sitting out. That's the biggest thing. It's like, oof, because it really focuses on that Euro puzzle mechanic of that board jumping around. But it's so rewarding to make those decisions, and that, I think, is the, my most enjoyable part of the game. Even when I took a strategy that I did not think was going to work halfway through the game, I still enjoyed that board jumping around and getting that synergy going. Also, I didn't comment on the fact that every, every kind of god or every one plays differently. So I think that really affects a game like the Greeks, where I, I really spread myself the planets to where I could hope that somebody gets me that resource. If they didn't, next time I'll switch it up. So I do like all the different options of making every game truly unique. But again, it's not what it looks like when you walk by and see it on the table. But I think uh, the puzzle in it is what would keep me coming back to this. There you go, folks. That's Anunnaki. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Joey Evans. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. Stargate. The game. It's there.